Today, I'm improving my custom mixer toolbar with some awesome scripts. So if you've seen any of my mixing videos, you've probably noticed this toolbar that I have on my left. This is just quick access for me to filter tracks in my mixer view. So if I press the all bus button, that's going to show me just the bus tracks. If I press the drums button, it shows me just the drums. Uh, and this is fantastic. And this is the feature that I'm, we're going to refine today. I haven't been using this toolbar all that much because I'm working on a smaller screen now. I used to work on a big 27 inch iMac and I had tons of space. And now that I'm working on a 15 inch MacBook, I think that if I upgrade and improve these functions a little bit today, I'll be kind of back into that habit. There's a newer way to set up these that's a lot simpler and uh, it can all be done in one place. Now, the original version of this would use a special text file that would get an action into the action list. The revised way was to use the SWS uh, cycle action editor and uh, use a console command in here to get an action into the action list. Uh, so this would be a capital S and then a star bass star uh, will select any of the tracks with the name bass in it. Once you have that into the action list, you have to make another custom action to actually do stuff with it once you have those tracks selected, like um, show only these tracks and none of the other tracks in the project, and then scroll to the top, things like that. So if I do, uh, type in bass here, you'll see my custom action for the bass. So it runs that console command, then it selects the children of the track, shows selected track, hide others, scroll track to home, select first of selected tracks. This can all be done in one place now. So we're gonna search for uh, show only specified tracks. And so that is this script window. And just so that I don't fall back on old habits, I'm actually gonna delete all of these uh, console actions here to select the synth track, select the percussion track, my VCA tracks, my strings track, and my vocal track, my effects tracks, drum tracks, keys track. Yeah, I'm gonna delete all of those so that I can't go back and, uh, you know, at the end of this video, skip it. I have to actually go through and fix all of my actions and, and my toolbar and my web remote. Uh, to do this. So anyways, uh, this script, Lokasana's show only specified track dot Lua. When we type in a name here like uh, drum, actually we already have drums shown here, so I'll just type in bass, and we're going to match more than one track. Um, otherwise it's going to choose just the first track. We can do only top level tracks. Yeah, because we want, um, that's well, that's how I like to have it. I don't want a track named bass that's six levels deep in folders uh, to be uh, visible to me. I'm going to show children of matches, uh, which means that if there's a folder named bass and there's tracks inside that folder, it's going to show me all the tracks within the folder. Parents of matches would be if you had a certain named track. So like if you search for DI, then any tracks named DI, whether they are top level or within a folder, would uh, be visible. And siblings means that it's going to show any other related tracks uh, within that folder. Because of the way I have my track template set up, I have certain tracks named a certain way. Um, so like drums bus, bass bus, guitar bus, vocal bus, um, my effects all go into an effects bus. So basically, uh, all the top level tracks, which go to the master, are going to have all the the audio tracks inside. So children of matches is what I want to do. And I want to apply it to both the TCP and the MCP. TCP is track control panel. That's what you see in the arrange view on the left. And MCP is mixer control panel. And that's just, is the track visible in the mixer? So I'm going to apply that to both. We can test this by clicking go. And so there's my base and then any of the child tracks. Even if they were unnamed, they don't have the name bass in it just because 
I have the um, Children of Matches set and only top level tracks set. So yeah, once we're happy with that and we want to use this again, we're going to hit Export Preset and, um, and we'll just call this Show Base telling me that it saved this as show only specified tracks, show base. So yeah, it's put it into the folder for me. And so if we look in the action list, show base, here's that action in there, a new script. So basically the process is exactly the same for all my other tracks. So I'm gonna search for bus, I'll click go, and then there's all the folder tracks and their childs. This is essentially showing me everything that's inside of a folder. So for this particular one, we're going to choose for, to not show the children of matches. Let's try that again. And so there's all my top level tracks, uh, which would basically give me eight faders to mess around with and um, get my rough levels really quickly done. Bus, more than one track, only top level tracks, no children, parents, or siblings, and uh, apply to TCP and MCP. So I'm going to export this, and I guess I don't need to put in uh, the word show in here. So I'll just call this bus, and OK, and save that. And I'll just repeat this for percussion, and this will, I will want the children in here. And this is just a test project. This is an actual project. There's no audio files. There's no, you know, track names for most of these other than my template stuff. I just you know, I just kind of randomly put tracks into folders uh, just to test this. So percussion, you know, these are my settings. Export, and call this percussion. Guitar. So in this case, it's showing me acoustic guitar and electric guitar. I didn't have any tracks inside the folders for this, uh, but that's okay. It looks like that's working right. So I can export this preset. I'll do vocal, and so I've got my vocal bus, my background vocal bus, and then any of the tracks that were within the folder. So again, exporting preset, name it vocal, do drums, export preset, okay, effects, don't have any effects tracks, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly what I want here. So. Effects. I'm probably forgetting one or two of these, but uh, for now, I'll, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Now I need to customize my toolbar again here. So um, all tracks I can leave the same. All bus and these other ones. Can I just these other ones? Yeah, let's get rid of all of these. So I'll go to add. I will do the uh, show only specified tracks. So I'm going to select, press down, select, 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 select. Yeah, and then we got to rename these. So going to text icon, and this was percussion. And I'm going to use a double width toolbar button. And then rename this one to vocals, and double width. And I'll just skip ahead here, I'll just repeat this. And then my last one here is all bus, so it's going to be all my bus tracks. And that one, I want to drag that up to the, below the all tracks. Oh, I might have to go back and rename these with all caps the way I used to have it, but for now, I think that's fine. Drums, bass, guitar, percussion, vocals. I'll put vocals at the bottom. All right, and I can hit save. My toolbar has been updated like that. And so if I hit the all tracks button, I'll show you the all tracks uh, shortcut in a second here. Um, but all tracks, all bus, drums, bass, Guitars, percussion, vocals, effects tracks, which I don't have in the project yet. Okay, so the action for all tracks, the custom action here. 
It's going to show all tracks. I've got a cycle action that will select or that hides the loudness graph folder tracks. You can just skip that if you're not using loudness graph. Uh, but again, scroll tracks to home and select first of selected tracks. There is one other script I wanted to show you from Locusana, uh, which is very similar. There's just the one that selects tracks by name without the actual uh, the show only uh, function. Uh, but this is still helpful if you want uh, just want to avoid the cycle action editor. You want all the same options just without the show and hide function. This is still helpful if you want to select a certain track and then insert an effects chain on that track uh, within a custom action. This is going to be a really easy way to do that. Any sort of custom action that you need to run on a uh, track that's named a certain way, this is a great way to do it. For video editing, I might want to uh, select my transitions track. So um, it's going to not select more than one track. Top level track doesn't matter. Children, parents, siblings, that doesn't matter. You do have the option of add to existing selection if you wanted. Uh, we're just going to hit export preset and I'll call this transitions track, I guess. Okay, and if I search for transition track, um, there's my console command, and then there is my new script. So essentially, this script makes scripts. They call them presets, but it's it basically makes a new script, which is then easier for you to share and easier for you to transfer between computers and things like that. Because when you're using the the cycle action editor and you're importing and exporting, these numbers change and then any custom actions that use that, they need to be updated. Any scripts that use cycle actions, the numbers always need to change. So this script, select tracks by name and show only specified tracks by name. These are available in Repack, just in the default bundle of actions. And that's where I'm gonna leave it for today because I got a bunch more work just to set up the rest of my stuff. Need to set this up in Reaper WRB uh, in my web remotes just to get this working on my iPad because half the time I'm using the toolbar, half the time I'm using the iPad to trigger these show hide things, especially if I'm mixing a lot. I need to have those options. This is one of my favorite kind of workflow tips for Reaper if you want to mix fast, um, if you want to focus on your work better, um, just eliminate everything you don't need to see at, at any time. Um, and for me, that's you know narrowing down the tracks to just the tracks that I want to hear or just the ones that I'm editing, adding effects to and things like that at a time. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.